Good evening and welcome to the evening news for today, Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. I'm Delroy Dash. Thank you for tuning in. Now, let's take a look at some of the lead stories tonight. Oh My discovers high-grade gold at Winnock Pit in Region 7. Trevor Ben slapped with another misconduct in public office charge over land deals. Police reports reduction in armed robberies and murders. President meets with NCA on health care solutions for children with heart diseases and students being denied internet access at school. Region 5 RDC hears. And now for the news in detail. Oh My Gold Mines, which has started a 5,000 meter drilling program in the Winnock Pit in Region 7, has announced the presence of high grade gold in the first two holes that extend at least 100 meters below. Jar Bryan reports. The announcement was made via a statement by Oh My Gold Mines, and it follows promises from the company last year that it would conduct its drilling campaign early in 2021. According to OMI, its current drill program is focused on expanding the open pit potential of Waynot in Region 7. Chief Executive Officer of OMI Gold Mines, Mario Stefano, was quoted lauding the gold find. He noted that the results demonstrate the potential of the mine and according to him, they look forward to more updates for their stakeholders. OMI Gold Mines Limited only returned to the Waynot and Fennel pits at the site in 2020 after leaving Guyana in 2015. The company had announced in December that it would be pressing forward with its 5,000 meter drilling program. It was only last November that OMI, which aims to reclaim its place as Guyana's top gold producer, had announced its impending return to the Toronto Stock Exchange. This followed the recent reverse takeover of Avalon Investment Holdings. There has been a flurry of gold finds over the past few months. In February, Gold X Mining, another Canadian company, found gold in the Toroparo mine. In November 2020, Australia-based mining company Alicanto Minerals also announced its first ever gold find in Guyana. Their announcement came shortly after Troy Resources announced that it had found gold deposits on the ground. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat has urged small miners to be cautious when entering into deals with large players in the industry. He noted that failure to do so can result in significant losses. He was at the time interacting with miners and other residents of Madhya Region 8, Pataro Supuruni. Lawanda McAllister tells us more. Over the weekend, Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat and a government delegation visited the mining town of Madhya in Region 8. During a meeting with residents, small miners expressed that they are at a disadvantage when it comes to the use of mining lands. However, Minister Bharat posited that the miners need to be more careful when making agreements with larger companies in the industry. You, you need to understand our position in a situation like that too. That was a private arrangement between you and the landowner. So when you make a contract between someone, you need to make a proper contract. According to the minister, issues of this nature are more difficult to resolve without formal agreements. Moreover, Minister Barrett revealed that a lottery is being considered to make more lands available later this year or early 2022. This would give small miners a chance to acquire lands. He said miners can still apply to the GGMC or the Closed Area Committee for land in the meantime. The minister also told the gathering that efforts are underway to ensure there are proper roads in the interland regions. Our objective over the next two to three years is to ensure that we open up new areas. As a matter of fact, what we are discussing right now is for GGMC to have a road works unit. Meaning we have truck and, and, and bulldozer and excavator and roller and all these equipment so that we can open up new areas because it is expensive to open new areas. I can tell you that. Reporting for the Evening News, I'm Lawanda McAllister. Former head of the Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission Trevor Ben was today slapped with another charge for misconduct in public office, this time over the sale of state lands to owner of car care enterprise Wilfred Bradford. Here are the details. The former Lands and Surveys boss Trevor Ben was arraigned before Principal Magistrate Shardell Isaacs Marcus at the Georgetown Magistrate's Courts. He was granted $100,000 bail. 
The charge alleged that between December 1, 2018 and August 31, 2019 at GL&SC Georgetown, while being a public officer, Ben willfully misconducted himself by executing a sale of two parcels of land known as Parcel 4725, being a mutation of Parcel 4716 LRB number XXX and Parcel 4805, being the mutation of former parcel 4779, all being a portion of Middle Walk Plantation Rheinveld. The charge further stated that Ben caused Wilfred Ransford to pay the sum of $13.5 million to GLNSC for the said lands, knowing at the time he did not have the authority to sell the lands, and knowing that the said plot had been earlier valued at the sum of $60.8 million, which amounted to willful misconduct and a breach of the public's trust without any excuse or reasonable justification. Ben, who was represented by attorney at law Mark Waldron, was not required to plead to the indictable charge. On March 12, 2021, Ben was slapped with a charge of misconduct in public office in relation to the leasing of some six acres of unmarked lands at Ogle, East Coast Demerara. Ben, who was appointed head of the GLNSC under the previous AP and UASC government, was sent packing shortly after the PPPC assumed office. Fiona Marston, The Evening News. In the wake of reports of a fuel import racket involving officials emphasized the need for the company to act in compliance with the established laws and procedures in line with good governance, accountability, and transparency. With the resignation of Guy Oil General Manager Trevor Basu, a subcommittee of the board will oversee the company's operations until a replacement is found. Reports had emerged that a businessman alleged that officials at Guy Oil contracted him to bring in fuel on the promise of kickbacks. The businessman alleged, however, that Gael got a sweeter deal and subsequently cancelled this arrangement, causing him to speak out. The police have since questioned officials from the state company, while Gael itself has staunchly denied having any arrangement with the businessman. Gerald Bryan, The Evening News. The Guyana Police Force has reported a 29.8% decrease in serious crimes thus far for this year, compared to the same period in 2020. It was noted that armed robberies involving firearms have gone down by 38.4%, while robberies with other instruments declined by 47.7%. There was a 22.9% reduction in murders with 37 killings recorded to date, compared to 48 for a similar period last year. Notwithstanding, the police force has said it is continuing to aggressively pursue crime-fighting strategies to maintain public safety and security. These include heightened mobile foot and bicycle patrols, roadblocks, raids and searches, among other things, with the support of the community policing groups. Further, the police have embarked on extensive campaigns in the various divisions targeting motor and bicycle robberies. These exercises have resulted in a number of motorcycles and bicycles being detained and being processed for lawful ownership and other issues. Meanwhile, a total of 123.4 kilograms of cannabis and 267.2 grams of cocaine were found so far for this year, for which a number of persons were prosecuted. Moreover, the police force is urging persons to be security conscious, especially when they are out on the road, including refraining from moving around with large sums of cash. The force is also encouraging persons to provide tips and information on criminal activity. Coming up, President meets with NCA on health care solution for children with heart diseases and $174 million online education platform launched to enhance curriculum delivery. Stay with us. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivon's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. 
And before you can say shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Get the perfect collection of Stanley hand tools today from Sylvie's Variety Store. Quality and reliability in the palm of your hands. From wrenches, measuring tapes, hammers, saws, socket sets, and screwdrivers. With constant perfection in designs and quality, we update our stock to get you the latest product line. Sylvie's Variety Store gets you the right Stanley tool for the job. Styles introduces its VIP Rewards Card. Apply today and get special discounts on clothing, shoes, and accessories. Shop and save on your favorite brands by just showing your card. No points to accumulate or bills to keep. It's that simple. Apply today for your John Lewis Styles VIP Rewards Card. See store for more details. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Looking to bring your dream home to reality or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint original hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do-it-best store, located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rheinvelt. SPR Enterprises has in stock a full line of top quality electrical products from leading manufacturers for all your project needs from start to finish. At SPR Enterprises, you can find all types of cables, transformers, transfer switches, control products, conduits, conduit fitting, tools, lighting, and much more. Our product line satisfies domestic, commercial, and industrial electrical needs. So what are you waiting for? Come down to our location at 45 Brickdam, Georgetown, or give us a call on 223-5 699 or 623 1392. We are open from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 30 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. SPR Enterprises, your single source for quality electrical products. Get laminated glass for your home or office from Gafours. It's double ply glass manufactured for safety. It'll shatter only under excessive pressure. And even so, pieces will adhere together as with a vehicle windscreen. It's preferable for areas where safety is important. For example, glass sliding doors and shop fronts. It helps to protect your home from burglars. And very important, it helps to reduce heat from direct sunlight, thereby reducing your cost for air conditioning. We can cut to any size and prices for thicknesses 6.2 millimeters to $600 per square foot, 8 millimeters $700 per square foot, and 11 millimeters $850 per square foot. Now available, glass sliding doors with laminated glass, 72 inches by 80 inches, $37,905, 96 inches by 80 inches, $47,675, and 100 inches by 80 inches, $49,105 with an introductory discount of 15% at Gafours, a name you can trust. Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. President Dr. Irfan Ali yesterday received a courtesy visit from members of the Novik Cardiac Alliance, the NCA, at his office on Shifchanda Paul Drive. Co-founder of the NCA, Dr. William Novik, and care consultant Smith Sean were joined by Dr. Marissa Sipasad. 
pediatric surgeon at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation and head of the medical services and cardiology at GPHC, Dr. Mahendra Karpen. The group discussed a range of issues with the president, including capacity building at the GPHC. Nove Cardiac Alliance specializes in sustainable healthcare solutions for children with cardiac diseases. Over the years, Dr. Novik has worked with local teams to build and sustain pediatric health surgery services in the developing world. His altruistic nature has led him to 46 cities in 32 countries over the last two decades, where he and his team have provided 7,411 children with operations and medical care. NCA is hoping to start a similar program in Guyana. According to Dr. Carpin, heart disease in children is indeed a major issue in the country. Vanu Manikchand joins us now to report that as Guyana continues to roll out its COVID-19 vaccination exercise, over 100,000 persons have received their first shot of, to date. With government wanting to ensure that the entire adult population in Guyana is immunized, arrangements are in place for persons who are bedridden to get vaccinated. Here are the details. We have met a milestone as of yesterday because we have exceeded 100,000 doses, uh, 100,000 persons receiving their first dose. Um, and this is across Guyana. We have had um, you know, people coming out, our teams going into villages. So I think the health workers who have been on this vaccination campaign has done a remarkable job for us to achieve this milestone. So I want to commend them. Um, for the job that they've done so far. That was Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony during Wednesday's COVID-19 update. He noted that while they have achieved this significant milestone, there is still a long way to go to ensure that all adult persons in Guyana, including foreign nationals living and working here, are vaccinated in order to attain herd immunity. To this end, Dr. Anthony said government is trying to reach everyone, including those who are bedridden and cannot go to the vaccination sites to get their shots. Well, we know there are a number of persons who are at home, um, they're bedridden, and if the persons who are caring for them can contact the regional health officers in the various regions, then we will certainly be able to work out uh, a way of taking the vaccines to them. Uh, we have been able to do uh, those that have been identified to us, uh, but I'm sure there are many more other persons. And um, from the side of the ministry, we are always willing to, to help in this regard. Already, the month of April has seen the country's highest number of cases detected with the COVID-19 death toll following closely behind. As such, the health minister implored with persons to adhere to the COVID-19 guidelines and protocols in place as well as to get vaccinated. I want to appeal to everyone uh, to come out and get their vaccines because this, while it does not prevent uh, the infection per se, it would also reduce the severity of the disease, which is more important, so that you would not end up in the hospital, uh, you would not uh, end up in the ICU, and you would not die from COVID. So that's a very important thing. So get your vaccine and we can help to reduce the hospitalization and deaths that we have been having from this disease. Reporting for the Evening News, Fanu Manik Chand. Guyana has recorded 162 new cases of the novel coronavirus, taking the total positives recorded to date to 12,132. There are currently 12 persons in the ICU, while 74 are in institutional isolation and 1,330 in home isolation. Five individuals are in institutional quarantine and 10,442 have recovered. Also, 274 have died. The latest fatality is a 52-year-old woman from Region 6 who died at a medical facility. 
Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa has ordered that a comprehensive report be completed and submitted to him on infrastructural and other works that are needed in the community of Helena, Mahaika, East Coast Demerara. The Wanda McAllister joins us once more to report that the minister made the request following a meeting with a group of farmers who raised a number of concerns about the state of the farming community. On Tuesday, Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa traveled to Helena Mahaika with a team of officials to get a first-hand look at some of the challenges being experienced by farmers there. During his visit, farmers asked the Minister for Origin Rehabilitative Works to be conducted on dams in the community. They also said they were dissatisfied with the way a recently constructed bridge was built. The farmers explained the machines used to transport their products from their farms were not able to cross the bridge because the rail were too narrow. I'm happy that the minister came and at least he made some commitment and that um, they will honor those commitments and we'll have relief in the shortest possible time. After listening to the farmers, Minister Mustafa said a report would be compiled on the issues. He also examined the bridge and noted that some amount of revetment works would have to be done to the structure to accommodate the farmers in the area. I've since instructed the NDIA to come back here tomorrow work along with the farmers and do a comprehensive report and then I'll be looking at it to see how much funds we can make available to do these works. But these are critical works to enhance the livelihood of these farmers and rest assured that we'll continue to work with them to get them get these matters resolved. The minister also said he was disappointed that farmers had to bring the matter of substandard projects to his attention when engineers are tasked with monitoring these projects. I am very disappointed to note that I have to come and discover these things when we have engineers and I will be revamping the entire engineer department at NDIA to ensure that we be more responsive. I have been saying this all the time that we have to be more responsive to the needs and the concerns of farmers and stakeholders. And it seems that more and more I am discovering as I am in this position, I am discovering that the NDIA has to be more proactive. I will be making a lot of changes and I have started already at NDIA. Reporting for the Evening News, I'm Luanda McAllister. To deliver distance education while school doors are still closed, the Education Ministry on Tuesday launched a new $174 million online learning platform for curriculum delivery, which is set to target over 1,000 teachers in the initial stage. Details in this for me, Fiona Morrison report. The online learning platform for the delivery of education was birthed in collaboration with the Global Partnership for Education and Tablet Academy. Director of the National Center for Education Research Development, Quinita Wadron Lewis, shared that this new initiative will provide for an integrated online platform. The initial phase will target 1,000 grade 7 teachers and their students in the four core subject areas. The rollout will involve the training of 60 master teachers on the platform, who will then train and support other teachers in a cascading model. These educators will receive laptops with the accompanying software, the Microsoft Office 365 A3 software solution, will provide access to all productivity software, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Note, Outlook, OneDrive. The Teams for Education app will allow for setting up of classes with facility for teacher and student notes, assessments, group work, meetings, and live classes. Meanwhile, Education Minister Priya Manikjan indicated that COVID-19 has resulted in an expansion of teaching mechanisms and use of technology to replace the traditional arrangement. She explained that the pandemic forced the ministry to brainstorm new ideas to reduce learning loss. It showed us how very unprepared we were to meet anything else but the traditional method of delivering education. We have looked at every possible way of delivering education that is not traditional, and by traditional I mean a trained teacher standing in front of the classroom delivering education using a blackboard and chalk. We have had to refashion our learning channel to deliver education according to the curriculum in a timetabled way to all who can receive that channel. We have had to 
look at how we use the radio, which is still the main way some people communicate, especially in the deep hinterland regions of the country. According to the education minister, there were a number of challenges in achieving these feats, including major deficits in the number of stakeholders with access to internet services and electronic devices. Classroom. We believe that there's going to come a time when, and it's not long off, when we're going to be unable to deliver certain topics, certain subjects, without the usage of tech to technology. And so today I welcome this program. It is just one of many different things we are doing regarding introducing technology and other modes of distance education in our system so that we could meet the need that COVID has presented, which is for us to deliver education while our school doors are closed. But I say with great confidence that it does this introduction of technology and other forms of distance education will not stop when COVID is finished. This is going to be fully incorporated into our education system here in Guyana so that we could be more effective at every level, nursery, primary, secondary, and across the tertiary learning levels. Fiona Merson, The Evening News. The Regional Democratic Council of Region 5, Mahaika Burbees, has received reports that students of the number 8 primary school on the west coast of Burbees are being denied access to the internet while the service is being made available to other persons, including security guards. Here are the details from Andrew Carmichael. The issue was raised at the RDC's last statutory meeting. Councillor Carl Nurse noted that many of the children who attend the number 8 primary school do not have access to internet services at their homes and therefore seek to use the internet at the school to complete their assignments. However, there is a password to gain access to the service and that password is not being given to students. In the night, and you can see the big people along with the security guard, they on the veranda and they access the internet and the children cannot have the <coughs> opportunity to do safe. Because let me say to you, even during our working hours, I mean, they're out of school, they would be at the village office, all around the compound. So they would see them doing their homework there. And I think if the internet system is at the school, they must have access it. Because some of them, when they go there, you, they, you can see you can um, come up on the tablet, please put in a password. And they don't know the password, so they cannot get the opportunity to use it. Regional Education Officer Dion Lewis Clark was asked by the Regional Chairman Victor and Ramphal to provide some information on the allegations. In response, the education official instead spoke of another issue. When COVID, when the pandemic started, all schools that have internet access to the pandemic started, we um, ensure that they were open, that each child can have access. For the past couple of weeks, number eight, it was done, and we had a technician, not only number eight, we had a day, um, my own student dormitories, and the technicians were in the region last week, and those issues were addressed. Meanwhile, Councillor Delon Crawford questioned the recommendations of the Regional Health Committee to have the drug bond at the Fort Wellington Hospital expanded, saying that a decision had already been taken to rebuild the Fort Wellington Hospital and claimed that the land for the new Fort Wellington Hospital had already been identified. However, Regional Vice Chairman Ryan Peters said the RDC is unaware of this. We're dealing with um, the, the recommendations that are before us, okay. and I cannot see in this document uh, any such recommendation as the Honorable Lord uh, refers to. Um, I, I would prefer if the honorable member uh, can stay um, at which time this the, the uh, committee of the regional democratic council in this city would have uh, brought before this honorable house any such uh, recommendations for consideration. Any other business? Point taken, sir. Point taken. For evening news, Andrew Carmichael. And now for a look at the bridge reports. The Damarara Harbour Bridge is scheduled to be closed on Thursday, April 22, 2021 at 1.30 hours and then again at 12 hours for a period of one and a half hours. 
Meanwhile, the Barbies River Bridge is scheduled to be closed on Thursday, April 22, 2021 at 12.10 hours for a period of one and a half hours. Now, let's take a look at the local stock exchange market. Compliments of Gasky. Grave confident of CWI pulling off South American tour, Ram Dani's duo to compete at Pan American Championships, and Alian Pompey shares concerns about June meet. Details of these stories and more in the Sportcast, sponsored by Macorp, coming up on the other side of the break. Your number one supermarket cost cutter has everything you need. Come down to our Sheriff Street or our Track A Farm East Bank Demerara location and shop in comfort, knowing that you're also getting the most competitive prices. We currently have specials on onions, five pounds for five hundred dollars, or fifty pound bag for thirty five hundred dollars. Purple onions, twenty five pound bag for twenty two fifty. Happy macaroni, four hundred gram packet, one for two hundred dollars and three for five hundred dollars. Just use a five hundred milliliter, one for one thirty five dollars and get four for $500. Miran soybean oil 500 milliliter bottle, one for $275, four for $1,000. Aqua pure water 24 330 milliliter bottles, $1,100 per case, buy 10 cases and get one case free and much more. Give us a call on 231-7180 or 502-5660. You can also WhatsApp our farm branch on 686-6501 and our Sharp Street branch on 686-7536. Looking for fresh, tender, and flavorful meat? Then check out Rosignol Butchery for steaks, burgers, sausages, minced meat, fish, and chicken. For a tasty, attractive cocktail, we have a wide variety of packaged deli meats and cheeses to decorate your platter. We also stock a wide assortment of canned goods, seasoning salts, sauces, and marinade, all in a highly hygienic, welcoming atmosphere with warm and welcoming staff to cater to all your needs. Rosignol Butchery, we meet your needs. 70 Dries to 74 Church Street, Georgetown. Telephone number 223 00. Massey is by your side as we continue the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. In collaboration with OneCart, you can now get your groceries delivered or you can pick up curbside. Call, email or WhatsApp your order to us. The service is available at both Providence and Turkine locations. Delivery and pickup between 8am to 4pm. The fee is based on location. Orders must be paid in cash and placed 24 hours in advance. Special conditions apply. Remember to always protect yourself and those around you by wearing your masks. Also, don't forget to wash your hands and maintain a distance of six feet at all times around persons. Massey Stores, our family serving your back to this evening's sportcast sponsored by Marcor. Do you want to save money and improve on your equipment's owning and operating costs? Then sign up for Marcor Customer Service Agreement, CSA, and get 19% discount on all CAT filters required to do your yearly maintenance. Reduce downtime with our oil sampling analysis. Manage your equipment's performance and get expert advice from our Caterpillar certified professionals. All of these and more are being offered once you sign up for a maintenance agreement. Visit us at 26 Providence or call us at 265-7315. Great productivity means great profit.